Good morning, everybody. This is North Carolina Prepper. And I want to talk about beans and rice. Someone was asking, or said they didn't really understand why beans and rice are a complete protein. And uh, I started doing some research because I always heard this. You know, it's one of those things everybody knows. But is it true? I don't know that this wasn't some agenda my, my vegetarian friends are pushing on me. I don't know. So I never gave it much thought. I've always been a meat eater, so it's never an issue to me. But when it comes to food storage, yeah, it is an issue. So I did some research, and this is currently what I believe to be the truth of the matter. So is, is uh, beans and rice or rice and beans a complete protein? Technically, let me just say the short answer is yes. Now... What is a complete protein? Let's start there. A complete protein, or a whole protein, is a source of protein that contains an adequate proportion of all nine essential amino acids for their dietary needs of humans or animals, or other animals. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll use that as our definition. Now, you don't need to eat complementary proteins together at every meal. As long as you get a variety of proteins throughout the day, you'll get an ample amount of each amino acid. But just in case you're interested, here are some ways to combine your complementary proteins so you don't need to eat them all at the same meal, but all throughout the day would be just fine. Beans and legumes, black beans and rice or cranberry beans. I don't know where I got cranberry beans at. I never heard of those, but I got them and uh, navy beans, or any type of beans, and rice, any type of rice. Pasta and beans, or pasta and uh, peas, I mean, I'm sorry. Whole wheat bread and peanut butter, bean soup and crackers. Now you can also add nuts and seeds plus your legumes to give you complete things. Roasted nuts, seeds, and peanuts. Hummus is almost a complete protein in itself because it's made of chickpeas and, I know I'm going to say this wrong, but it, tahini, I guess. It's a paste made from ground hulled sesame seeds. So basically, almost is chickpeas, uh, chickpeas, sesame seeds, and some olive oil, olive oil, and some lemon juice, and something else. I don't know what else in it. Now, lentils and almonds will work. If you want to get technical, most beans do not really contain a protein. They contain a protein-like group of amino acids. Um, <clears throat> we just call them incomplete proteins for the sake of argument because they're missing or extremely low in at least one or more of the essential amino acids, making it a variable complete protein. That's the long and the short of it. Most beans do not measure up. This is where we must contrive a necessary food combining or synthesis a dietary measure where beans missing one or more amino acids are mixed with rice which are missing a different amino acids resulting in a complete protein together because they overlap the two or more incomplete protein profiles even though a complete protein is still a weak protein because the missing over amino acids are now overlapping and, and meshing together. So there, there's multiple coverage there of the, of the missing proteins, or amino acids, I mean. This is still going to create a bottleneck for protein synthesis from the other missing animal, uh, amino acids that your body may need or use. For example, all amino acids are not essential amino acids. Your body can make amino acids from leftover amino acids that it hasn't used and other raw materials from your body and other sources and get it but it, it cannot manufacture the amino acids that are called essential amino acids those you have to consume or get another way they can't be synthesized by your body animal proteins uh, contain every single one of the nine essential I think it's nine I think it's nine uh, essential amino acids so we call these complete proteins for example, grains and cereals are extremely low in, in two or more types of, uh, of amino acids. They're so low they can't be considered a source of amino acids if they have it. 
If you eat only grains and cereals, you won't get enough amino acids, and that would be bad. However, legumes, such as peanuts, peas, dried beans, lentils, etc., contain a lot of a missing amino acids that you really need. On the flip side, legumes aren't a good source of tryptophan and other amino acids. But those amino acids found in grains and cereals, that's what you, those are the other ones they're missing. As long as you eat some grains and some legumes, you can get enough of each of the amino acids, each type of amino acids to over, overlap. Grains and legumes, legumes are called complementary proteins because when you combine them, you get all of the essential amino acids. Nuts and seeds are also complementary to legumes because they contain the missing amino acids that the legumes don't have. Now, soy is kind of one plant protein that kind of has everything, contains all the amino acids. It's a good source and it's usually of amino acids. It's usually served as tempeh or tofu or soy milk. It's a popular placement for milk. Now, we have a lot of soy products here, uh, like bacon bits. Imitation bacon bits, I believe, are soy. So, we have those and, and a lot of our spices are imitation stuff. We have some imitation meat to can meat as fillers for whatever if we ever need it but they'll they'll do that so that's soy so we'll get a complete protein from those but this is my understanding at this time i just want to make a quick video to clear up what i believe to be the truth um like i said before i didn't know if this was just some agenda my my uh, vegan friends or vegetarian friends are pushing on me but this is what i believe to be the truth now it's just an overlapping mesh and together it equals the good stuff so there you go, you know. All right, it's so okay, Pepper. That's what I believe. Please ask questions below, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Everybody have a great day. Thanks.